And the first compound on the performance enhances list is creatine. Creatine is a natural compound synthesized from amino acids, glycine, arginine, and methane. Once synthesized, it is stored and used as a buffer in a form of phosphocreatine to rapidly produce ATP, the main source of energy in the cells from its precursor ADP. This reaction is catalyzed by the enzyme creatine kinase, a crucial biologically active compound and a biomarker. Imagine this, every time when you use up your ATP to produce energy, creatine replenishes the ATP storage. So every time when muscles or brain need to work hard and its energy demands increase, creatine is there to provide the required energy. That's why it is so popular among athletes, both professional and amateurs, and just recreational athletes and regular gym and fitness enthusiasts. Although the majority of creatine stored in the muscle tissue, it is also present in brain, heart, testicles, liver, and kidneys. Due to its safety and availability, creatine is often used by young individuals, even by teenagers. The intake of creatine helps to improve muscle strength and endurance and increase a lean muscle mass. It also enhances recovery and facilitates faster adaptation to training. Creatine pushes up the anaerobic threshold, but not the aerobic capacity. However, overall, it does increase the capacity for the physical workout. Medical uses of creatine. Creatine was found helpful in treatment of muscular dystrophies, although it didn't show efficacy in treatment of ALS and Parkinson's disease, it was found to slow down the brain atrophy in patients with Huntington's disease. Creatine is used in treatment of myocardial ischemia and arrhythmias that happen because of the myocardial ischemia. Creatine lowers lipids, the bad cholesterol, and triglycerides in blood. It lowers HbA1c levels in diabetes type 2 patients and improves bone condition in individuals with osteoporosis. Creatine improves cognitive function, cognitive processing and even decreases the severity and enhances the recovery from the traumatic brain injuries. The studies show that in combination with caffeine, creatine is capable of ameliorating the negative effects of the sleep deprivation and hypoxia. It was found clinically effective in children with global development delay, autism and autism spectrum disorders, and individuals with intellectual disability. Whether young, old, pregnant, professional athlete, or diabetic patient after heart attack, many can take it and benefit. And by the way, vegans have quite a lower levels of creatine in their body compared to those who eat the regular diet. When is the best time to take creatine and at what dose? Studies show that best outcomes are achieved with creatine taken in a dose of at least 5 to 8 grams per day, preferably post-workout. There are various protocols of creatine intake including the loading dose for the first five to seven days. Whether loading is done or not, creatine is going to work anyways. And studies have shown that intake of 30 grams of creatine per day in a span of several years did not cause any negative effects on health of the subjects. Who can't use creatine? Well, people with kidney disease and kidney failure, People where the lung issues, such as pulmonary edema, should be more careful with creatine, as well as uh, should avoid extreme dehydration while using creatine. Side effects are relatively rare, taking into consideration the amount of users of this supplement and include water retention, which often is transitory, and the mild abdominal discomfort.